The first time that I felt shame about my body, I was in dance. I remember wearing a black leotard and nude tights, and I remember hating both of them. But it was worth it, because I loved to dance. And I remember in that same awful leotard and those same disgusting tights, turning to my friend and asking, do I look fat? And I remember her turning to me and saying, yes. I was six years old then, and that was the last year that I did dance, and the first that I became insecure. Now that same feeling of shame never really went away, and I'm sure you felt something similar to it before. That feeling of wanting to hide your body because the idea of anyone else seeing it was too hard to handle. But I ask you now, when was the first time you felt that shame? How old were you the first time you felt that shame? And now, count back. How long have you spent being ashamed of your body? Well, for me, considering I was six years old the first time I felt it, I spent nine years being ashamed of my body. Nine years letting it hinder me from doing things that I loved. For six-year-old me, that was dancing. For 15-year-old me, that was writing. But for all versions of me, it was something. All because I was convinced that my body was the most interesting and most important part of me. And if it didn't have anything to offer, then neither did I. It took me nine years to realize the stupidity of my shame. And all it took was a movement called body neutrality. But you're probably thinking, what is this movement even about? And it's exactly what it sounds like. The practice of being neutral towards your body. It's all about accepting your physical appearance and appreciating your skills instead. It's all about alleviating that shame that six-year-old me felt. And no, it's not about not caring about your appearance. I'm not asking you to stop wearing makeup or to stop trying to get ready in the morning. I'm not telling you to wear pajamas to your next job interview. That's not what this is about. What this is about, though, is accepting your body in whatever state it may be in. But how is this any different from body positivity? And while yes, they do have similarities, especially in terms of their end goals, their processes to get there are incredibly different. Again, body neutrality puts its emphasis on your skills and asks you to accept your visible appearance. Body positivity, though, asks you to constantly love your appearance and puts no emphasis on its skills whatsoever. This, in itself, is an issue and ultimately is why body neutrality is a better alternative. And despite the fact that I think it's incredibly unfair to ask everyone to love their bodies at all times, the body positivity movement has also lost sight of its purpose completely. As I'm sure you know, the movement arose around 2015, but since then, it's only been manipulated by influencers on social media and dieting companies. Body positivity still puts an emphasis on your appearance, and social media still wants people to be beautiful. So when these two clash, body image issues are not going to be solved. In fact, according to a study done in 2016, there was still a positive correlation between social media usage and negative body image. Body positivity still obsesses over physical beauty. It's only disguised as self-love. So, this positive correlation comes as no surprise. Diet and culture twisted this movement even further out of shape. It hijacked it to sell their product, and I'm sure you've heard an ad along the lines of, oh, you're beautiful, and we know you're beautiful, but we have something that can make you more so. It only costs about $200 a month. These types of ads convince the audience that the company is on their side, all while contradicting the ideal that they're supposedly supporting. And listen, I'm not saying that all dieting is bad. When it's recommended by a doctor or when it's done for health reasons. The diets that are bad though, are fad diets. 
Diets like keto and intermittent fasting that are aimed towards young people, those are the issue. And what's more is that they don't even work. According to one study done on obese people in these fad diets, 83% of them gained back more weight than they had lost in two years since participating in the diet. So they literally don't work, plain and simple. But the industry has still contorted the body positivity movement to an extreme extent. And by this point, it's lost all value. Further than this though, any emphasis on your appearance has the potential to induce that same shame that I felt for nine years. Body positivity has this. Body neutrality does not. But why am I, some random 17-year-old girl, coming up here and telling you how to view your body? Why should you care about what I have to say? Well, as a 17-year-old girl, especially one who is and never has been small, I have a lot of experience with this kind of thing. As I mentioned, I first felt that shame when I was six years old. And from then on, I was constantly conscious of my appearance. I was constantly aware of the judging looks all because I didn't fit the beauty standard. But what's more than that is that I drove myself crazy trying to feel beautiful, trying to convince myself that it didn't matter what other people thought as long as I found myself gorgeous. None of it mattered though. It all induced that same shame that I felt in that black leotard and those nude tights. That's why I'm bringing this to you today. Because if you're anything like me, if you related at all to my earlier story, I wanted to bring you the main thing that alleviated that shame. So I ask you to take away that emphasis on your appearance and place it on your bodies and your skills. There's something that one of the mentors told me while I was drafting this TED talk. She told me that when she would go over to her friend's houses, they would constantly apologize for the state of it, even if it was never messy. And she would tell them, I didn't come here to see your house. I came here to see you. This is how I would like you to view your body. A house you take care of and love and respect but that does not define you. This is how I'd like you to view other bodies too. So I challenge you, practice the practice. I can't convince every user on social media to stop Photoshopping their photos or every dieting company to stop advertising their services. What I can do though, is try and help you change your mindset. And before I delve deeper, I'm not asking you to get rid of any current practices you have. If you model or you frequent the gym, keep doing that. That's something you hopefully enjoy and I'm not disregarding it. However, I challenge you to view your body as a home, to accept it as it is and appreciate what it does for you, but not to acknowledge it as the most important part of you. I ask you to correct negative thoughts you have about it. When you're in the gym, for example, and you're as red as a tomato and panting harder than anyone else, Focus on the way your heart beats and the way your muscles strain. When you're eating, notice the way it brings your family together or how you have a moment to relax. Feel strong when your legs carry you up a steep hill and content when your stomach fills with food. When you look at others, notice more than their body and how aesthetically pleasing you find them. They're more than that. Your body is merely a home, but it is not you. It allows you to be you. It allows you to sing and jump and love and run. It allows me still to dance. It allowed six-year-old me to dance. So I challenge you, practice the practice, get rid of that shame, and let your younger self dance. Thank you.